Hi everyone, I'm Dan Fullerton, and in today's lesson we're going to talk about RL circuits. Our objectives are going to be to apply Faraday's law to a series circuit including a resistor and an inductor in order to obtain a differential equation for current as a function of time, to solve that differential equation for the current as a function of time using separation of variables, to calculate the initial transient and final steady state currents through any part of a simple series in parallel configuration that includes an inductor and one or more resistors, and finally to sketch graphs of the current or voltage across the resistors or inductors in one of these simple RL circuits. So with that, let's take a look at inductors and circuits. Over here we have our power supply, our voltage source, we have a resistor, and we have our inductor over here, L. And I'm going to write the potential difference across that inductor as L di dt. Now when the circuit is first turned on, the inductor opposes current flow, and therefore it's going to act like an open circuit. But when it's been on for a little bit, the inductor keeps the current going and acts as a short. After a long time, if the battery is removed, the inductor acts as an EMF source to keep the current going. Whatever is happening, it wants to keep it in that state. It resists change. And as the resistor dissipates power, the current will decay exponentially to zero. How do we go about analyzing that? Well, here with our simple RL circuit, the first thing we have to realize is we're going to have to apply Faraday's law in order to find the current as a function of time. We can't use Kirchhoff's voltage law because Kirchhoff's voltage law doesn't work when you have a changing magnetic flux. So as we do this, let's first make a few definitions. Let's call that the direction of our current flow, I, and then let's write down the electric field so we have the directions. In the resistor, our electric field is going to point that way. In our power supply, it's going to point from positive to negative that way. In our inductor, our electric field is going to be zero. So now we can write Faraday's law and then use that to analyze our circuit. So let's start by writing that the integral over the closed loop of E dot DL is going to be equal to minus D phi B DT, negative rate of change of our magnetic flux, which in this case is negative L DI DT. All right, so as we go around our circuit and look at our electric fields, we have, starting up here with our current, our electric field there, or our potential drop, the integral over the closed loop of E dot DL. That's just going to be IR. No electric field here, so nothing there. And then we come back here to our voltage, V. And we see the negative side first, that's the positive. So IR minus V must be equal to minus L DI dt, which implies then, well, let's, let's rearrange this a little bit to say that i minus v over r must equal minus l over r di dt. And now we can do our separation of variables to get all our variables of like kinds on the same side. So this implies then, I would write this as di divided by I minus V over R must then be equal to minus R over L DT. We've got our differential of I and I on the same side. And as you look at that, that looks kind of like the form DU over U. So I'm starting to think natural log already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the integral of both sides. And on the left hand side, I'm going to integrate from our initial current of zero to some final current I. And on the right-hand side, I'm going to integrate from some initial time t, time t equals zero to final time t. All right. As I look to integrate that then, that implies then this is of the form du over u. So that's going to be the natural log of i minus v over r evaluated from i equals zero to i must be equal to, well, minus r over l, those are constants, integral of dt is just going to be t. So that's going to be minus r over l times time. Okay, so let's substitute in our variables there on the left-hand side. This implies then that the log of i minus v over r minus the log of minus v over r 
must equal minus R over L T. Okay. This implies then, well, we've got a log minus a log. That's going to be the log of the quotient. So that implies that the natural log of I minus V over R divided by minus V over R equals minus R over L times T. But this natural log, it sure be helpful if that went away. So if I raise both sides, E raised to that power, E to the natural log is just going to be what we have there. So I end up for the left-hand side, I minus V over R divided by negative V over R equals, and the right-hand side becomes E to the minus R over L times T. Now it just becomes a matter of rearrangement, solving this to get the current all by itself. So if I multiply both sides by negative V over R, this implies then that I minus V over R equals negative V over R E to the minus R over L times T. Or if I add V over R to both sides, this implies then that I equals V over R times one minus E to the minus R over L times T. And that form should look fairly familiar. We've got a constant times one minus E to the negative T over tau, our time constant, very similar to when we were looking at RC circuits, where now tau is equal to L over R. So if I wanted to, I could also write that equation with just a little bit of rearrangement as I equals V over R times one minus e to the negative t over tau, our time constant, where once again you achieve 99% of the final value of your variable after about five tau. All right, let's take a look then at what happens if we want to get the voltage in this circuit. Well, if we want to find v here, the voltage across our inductor, vl is a function of time, is just going to be L di dt. And we already know what I is, so this is just going to be L times the derivative of what we just determined for our current I, which was V over R times the quantity one minus E to the negative R over L times T. Well, the V over R can come out of the derivative sign since that's a constant, so that's L V over R derivative with respect to time of one minus e to the negative r over l t. That implies then that the voltage across our inductor is a function of time is just going to be l v over r times well, we'll have negative e to the minus r over l t times the derivative of that with respect to t, which is going to be minus r over l. So with just a little bit of rearrangement then, I can see that the voltage across that inductor is a function of time, is going to be, well, my negatives will cancel out. I will get r on the top, r on the bottom, that'll cancel out, l on the top, l on the bottom, that cancels out, and I just get my battery's voltage, v, times e to the minus r over l t. Or in terms of tau, we could write this as V of L, VL of T equals V E to the minus T over tau. Again, still following that same basic form. Let's take a look now at the rate of change of current in this circuit now. So we look at this, the rate of change of current with respect to time di dt, well, that's just going to be the time derivative of our current, which we've already figured out, V over R times the quantity one minus E to the negative T times R over L. Or pull the V over R out times the derivative with respect to T of one minus E to the minus R over L T. And I just take the derivative of that again, which implies that di dt equals v over r times, well, we're going to have 
negative e to the minus r over l t times minus r over l. Therefore, that's going to equal, well, my r's are going to cancel out just v over l e to the minus r over l t. Or in terms of tau again, that's equal to v over l e to the minus t over tau. So we've found the current in the circuit, the voltage in the circuit, and the rate of change of the current. So let's put this together to take a look at the current and voltage graphs. As we start this circuit out, we're going to have an initial current of zero, and it's going to increase exponentially over a time period of about 5 tau, which is 5 L over R, to about 99% of its final value. And the asymptote here is going to be I max, which is equal to V over R. So there's our graph for current. Well, down here, let's take a look at our voltage. If we start up here at our maximum voltage at time zero across our inductor, over time, that's going to follow an exponential decay sort of path where again, by the time we get to 5 tau, which is 5 L over R, we're at 99% of our final value, or getting awfully close to that zero voltage across our inductor. All right, hopefully that gets you a good start on RL circuits and how to analyze them. If you need more help or looking for more information, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks, everyone, and make it a great day.